Imagine your brain is a city, buzzing with activity 24-7. Neurons are like skyscrapers, filled with workers, constantly sending messages, making decisions, and solving problems. But what happens if the power goes out? That's where mitochondria come in. The tiny power plants inside your cells that keep your brain running. Today, we're going to explore why mitochondrial function is critical for mental health and what happens when these power plants start failing and how this insight could shift psychiatric treatment. Stay with me because understanding this could change the way we approach mental health. Mitochondria are involved in far more than just energy production. They regulate neurotransmitters, inflammation, oxidative stress, and even cellular resilience. When mitochondrial dysfunction sets in, the entire system can spiral into metabolic chaos, contributing to depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and neurodegeneration. And this is where we enter into the field of metabolic psychiatry. Note that metabolic psychiatry, however, does not just narrow itself down to mitochondria, because mitochondria are linked to a range of other processes, oxidative stress, inflammation, neuroinflammation, neurotransmitters, etc. The real question is, are we addressing psychiatric disorders broadly? And have we looked at the molecular level? Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist. So let's explore the link between mitochondria and mental health. Think of your brain as a high-tech metropolis and mitochondria as a power plant fueling everything. So when the power grid is strong, lights stay on, transportation runs smoothly, and businesses thrive. This is a well-functioning brain. But if power plants break down, outages occur, some areas might flicker. Think about it as brain fog. Others shut down entirely. Fatigue, psychomotor slowing, and emergency systems kick in, the inflammatory response, sometimes causing more harm than good. Mitochondrial dysfunction is like the rolling blackouts in the brain. Energy production drops, stress builds up, and critical operations start failing. This helps explain to a certain extent why many psychiatric disorders involve low energy, cognitive slowing, and neuroinflammation at its core. So let's explore some of the scientific mechanisms of how mitochondria affect mental health. First, energy production. So think about it as keeping the lights on. Mitochondria generate ATP, the currency of cellular energy. And we know in conditions like bipolar disorder and depression, ATP production is often impaired, which can lead to fatigue, low motivation, and cognitive slowing. Two, Neurotransmitter regulation. Think about this as the traffic control and supply chain management. Mitochondria influence the synthesis and regulation of serotonin, dopamine, and glucosamine. Mitochondria themselves have receptors for neurotransmitters. Dysfunction of these neurotransmitters can contribute to mood instability, cognitive deficits, and altered stress responses. Third, oxidative stress. Think about this as pollution and fire hazards. Now, mitochondria generate reactive oxygen species, what we call ROS or ROS, as a natural byproduct. However, when overwhelmed, reactive oxygen species, ROS, damage DNA, lipids, and proteins, leading to neurodegeneration and worsening psychiatric symptoms. And finally, calcium regulation. Think of these as emergency systems and traffic lights. So mitochondria regulate intracellular calcium, which is essential for neuronal signaling. Dysregulation can result in excitotoxicity, neuroinflammation, and disrupted synaptic plasticity. Now, if you're a clinician, and if you want to explore these scientific aspects and link them to clinical practice, then explore the academy.psychscene.com. Because what we do here is we start off from symptoms, connect them to phenomenology, we connect the phenomenology to the neurobiology, which includes the molecular level, cellular level, tissue levels, neural networks. And when we understand this, we're able to target the symptomatology a lot more effectively because the neurobiological understanding can lead to appropriate treatment strategies. 
Now, there are cases where we don't exactly know what's happening at the molecular level, but we can certainly address the higher up neural network level. And note here, the neural network level is bidirectionally related to lower levels of tissue systems, cellular systems, and molecular systems. So top-down modulation can improve mitochondrial health as well. So what happens when these power plants fail and we connect the symptomatology to the specific psychiatric disorders? For example, in depression, reduced ATP levels can contribute to fatigue, anhedonia, and impaired neurogenesis. In bipolar disorder, mitochondrial instability may underlie the mood cycling and cognitive shifts. Now, what's interesting here is lithium has a neuroprotective effect, and part of its effect is also improving mitochondrial health. In schizophrenia, impaired mitochondrial function disrupts dopamine regulation and cognitive processing. And in neurodegenerative conditions, mitochondrial dysfunction accelerates neuronal loss and cognitive decline. The promising aspect, mitochondrial function can be enhanced. It's modifiable. Here's how. First, exercise. Exercise increases mitochondrial biogenesis and improves metabolic resilience through a range of mechanisms. Two, dietary interventions. Ketogenic diets, intermittent fasting, and supplements like coenzyme Q10. B vitamins, omega-3, also support mitochondrial health. Third, medications and supplements. Lithium, creatine, acetyl, L-carnitine, and antioxidants like NAC have mitochondrial benefits. You can explore NAC, for example, in a lot more detail through the playlist here. Fourth, managing stress and sleep. Chronic stress depletes mitochondrial function, while quality sleep can support mitochondrial repair. So you can see by addressing the broader aspect at the top level, we can influence the molecular levels. We don't have to always start at the molecular level because sometimes we don't exactly know how to address it in severe cases. And to give you a clinical example, this is what we see in conditions such as ME-CFS or long COVID, where a severe fatigue, brain fog is present, where the individual also has pain, simply prescribing coenzyme Q10, for example, or NAC may not be able to change the overall picture. And this is why here we target the broader domains. You can learn more in this video here that I did on MECFS and long COVID, which is an hour and a half video where I go through all of these aspects in a lot more detail. So why does this matter for psychiatry and mental health? Viewing psychiatric disorders through a metabolic and mitochondrial lens shifts the conversation. It takes us deeper into the molecular, the tissue, and the cellular levels. So whilst we take into account neurotransmitter dysregulation, we can also address energy deficits, oxidative stress, and metabolic disruptions that drive symptoms. This approach may help refine psychiatric treatments and introduce new interventions that go beyond symptom suppression. And I'll cover these in more detail in the future. So if you found this breakdown insightful and helpful, hit the like button because it really helps the channel. And subscribe for more deeper exploration into the neuroscience of mental health. If you've got questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below. I always love reading your thoughts. And if you're curious about the link between metabolism and psychiatry, check out our video on N-acetylcysteine here. I look forward to seeing you all in another video soon. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.